So over the past couple of weeks I've been running into somewhat of a battery problem, which basically means that the batteries for my cameras aren't charged when I need them to be charged. But in this video we're building a charging station with a power station from All Powers to sponsor today's video. And I was really curious how much each of my tools took, so we'll be taking a look at that as well. The reason the prior charging situation somewhat failed is because of the way that I have my studio set up. So everything is on wheels, and it also means it's not very reliable in terms of when each car receives power. That's not the case for the compute box though, that one always has power, so I'd like to build something in the same theme as that one, and then also make it so that we can interchange it with different panels in case it doesn't work out. In our case we're using 12mm thick plywood, which is the same as on the compute box, making it 60cm wide, 30cm deep and 8cm thick. We can export this as a DXF file, import it into Shape 3D, extrude all of those sketch layers and then, you know, model it into a box. After this I imported the panel holders for the compute box, which I wanted to integrate on this one as well. And it's a little bit cumbersome because they're quite small and so they're not really optimized to hold like battery charges, right? But the reason I'm doing it in this way is because I, I've done this once before, like I built like this charging suitcase and it worked out for like half a year and then it dissolved into something different. And so in this case, if it does happen, then I would like it to be interchangeable with the other panels so that it's not a complete waste. In this case, we're running the laser cutter off the All Powers power station. And I was a little bit scared for this because I wasn't actually sure how much power a laser cutter took. And so I'm plugging in the air assist alongside the laser cutter itself. So it's two devices. And I think the air assist takes about 30 watts. It's not necessarily the size of the laser cutter that makes a big difference. So this one's absolutely massive, but it shouldn't necessarily take a lot more power than, you know, a smaller laser cutter with the same module. But I was expecting this to be quite a lot because when you think about it, it's really quite strange that we're cutting through a sheet of multiplex with light. I was quite shocked to see that it was only taking about 250 watts and that's with the air assist on on the battery itself as well. So that's pretty insane considering that most jigsaws take about 600 watts. And that's not really a fair comparison. I mean a jigsaw is a totally different tool of course. But I'm comparing it to how I would do a project like this prior to having a laser cutter. So when the glue was drying out, I sent the first print to the X1C and I was really shocked by how much power it was taking in the beginning of the 3D print. So it was taking 900 watts when I checked up on it and that's when it was heating up the bed and probably the nozzle as well. After that, when it actually started printing, it calmed down a little and went down to, you know, about 110. After that first print, we were left with 41% in the battery and then I printed the smaller insert for the panel as well and we were left with 25%. So after this, I hooked up to my sanding machine and my vacuum. That pulls about 1500 watts and I was able to sand and, you know, with the vacuum cleaner attached for about five to seven minutes and then it completely died. So the battery goes down to about 5% and that's when it cuts off. And that's just to save the cells that are inside. Once the battery is all dead, you can recharge it in a couple of ways, either by plugging it into the wall or using some solar panels. But you can buy many different kits with this R1500 unit. And this one is about 1152 watt hours. So it's quite a lot of juice in there. So at the front, you also have some buttons to turn off and on each of the ports. So you can turn off the USB ports or the actual power plugs. And at the top of the device, we have some wireless charging pads. So special thanks to All Powers for sending this out. I'll leave some links in the description down below. After sanding everything down, I wanted to apply a coat of lacquer to see how the colors would pop. Because it's multiplex, there's quite a lot of glue layers in between, which turn very yellow once you have sanded it down a little bit too much. But I think that really adds to the look of it as well, because the 3D prints come out looking really quite like, clean and clinical. Having that contrast there, between this box looking somewhat rugged with those burn marks and the glue layers exposed. It's, yeah, it somewhat works for me. So I still had some of these 24 volt switches laying around and I took that to the 3D scanner 
imported that into the CAD and integrated it into this tiny little panel at the center front over there. This is so that you can hook it up to one of the USB cables, or like four USB cables, and then turn off charges that you don't use as often because sometimes you have batteries that you do need, but you don't need them all of the time, but they keep sucking power even though they're not actually doing anything. Now I left the rest of the panel somewhat blank, but we can upgrade those later if we ever change it into something else or want to upgrade it with even more switches, maybe some USB ports, that kind of stuff. I also 3D scanned one of these three prong power plugs. I put these on most of my setups these days because it's very easy to have a three prong laying in the middle of the room and I rolled a desk to it and then plug it in. In this case, that's not really the use case for it, but if I need to move the panel to someplace else and, you know, a power cable is all wrapped into the system itself, it becomes quite a hassle to deal with. So having it on this little box and being able to unplug it really quickly, move it someplace else is really quite useful. And this three prong power plug is actually powering a power strip. So I snapped the cable in half, stripped all of the wires, connected them with some heat shrink, and that has been a really decent solid integration. Inside of this thing we actually have the power plug but also you know this USB power supply and that just connects to you know the camera chargers, the Rode wireless goes, I'll put those on here as well. Yeah, the, the boxes I created for this setup, I was thinking to myself yeah I need the, ca the cables to come from the underside because otherwise you can't drop them in and for some reason I completely forgot about that and just did it in a very stupid way for some reason but it worked out okay because I could wire the cables through the center panel which doesn't really hold any chargers and then shove that one in place. As for the integration currently, it's sitting on the desktop itself, but I do have plans to put some base mounts underneath that and attach it to monitor arms, which will be an addition to the computer box setup. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it gave you some inspiration and hopefully see you in the next one.